Hello, Lifeway, and welcome to our weekend service for our first Sunday um, of October, and our first weekend, whenever you're watching the video. I want to thank Sunrise Church in Puyallup, where they have uh, the world's most beautiful administrator, secretary, our, my lovely wife, and your um, pastor's wife, Grace Marie, and she works here. I want to thank Pastor Kevin and Pastor Dan and the church for allowing me to come and be able to uh, do a series of sermons for October. Um, we're going to be online all of October. And a few reasons, and I ask for your prayers for that, is one, um, as you know, uh, two of my good friends that I grew up with, uh, Marty Ryan and Brian Brown, both passed away um, in the last week of, of August. And appreciate the prayers for the Ryan family. As you're viewing this, Grace and I um, did the first uh, celebration of life um, service or gathering um, last weekend for Marty Ryan. At the end of the month, I will be uh, going with the Brown family and doing a small service or just spending time with them in celebration of Brian. Please be in prayer for both the Ryan family and for the Brown family during this time. Also, I have the awesome, excuse me, awesome, wonderful privilege of uh, being able to take uh, your pastor's wife away for a week. Yes, she's going to spend uh, a week with me, um, just her and I. And so pray for her that I don't drive her nuts. And um, we're just going to have a good time away at the coast. And uh, then some training going on that I have some following. So just some things that are coming up that I am thankful we can do online. And also please be in prayer that as we return in November, that we will all be able to gather together in um, a great way to see each other. Uh, so be in prayer for that and how God leads us. What we're uh, <clears throat> going to be talking about in this series for the next six weeks is we're going to be talking about God. And you're saying, no kidding. <laughs> and uh, yet, I want to share with you just about God's characteristics, how much he loves us, how he loves us as a heavenly father. And just to understand, the more that you and I discover how much God loves and cares for us, the more we're going to draw closer to him. He's not up there with his arms crossed, shaking his head. He's not up there pointing his finger. He's up there saying, I love you, and I gave everything for you, and I desire you. You are irresistible to God. Now, saying that, I've made a mistake about uh, the name of the Bible study we're going to be looking at. I kept calling it irresistible, but there is a Bible study um, that we're going to be doing for small groups uh, every Tuesday night starting uh, the second, uh, not the second Tuesday, I'm sorry, starting um, the 13th of October, whichever Tuesday that is, I believe that's the second Tuesday. Uh, we're going to start up again our small group on Zoom, and we're going to make sure you have a Zoom link to that. If you don't have that, please let us know, because we'd love for you to be a part of it. It's been great um, uh, Bible study time with everyone and good connection. But that Bible study is called Forsaken. And in the Bible study Forsaken, it talks about how we are irresistible to, to God, that God loves us so much. And so it's by Louis Giglio. You can go online and get the study book. Uh, I believe it's about $13. And to follow along with us, there's even a whole book that Louis Giglio wrote. Um, you go to Life Life Christian Resources or other online um, Christian book distributors online to get that material. And, or you can just follow along your Bibles. But Tuesday night at 7 o'clock on October 13th, I hope that's right, because I know we um, come back on the 12th. And so uh, love to see you all. And it's exciting, too, as we're looking at small groups. What um, uh, happened already is Karen Johnston is doing a small group on Wednesdays, I believe it's 6.30 in the evening. And she is doing the five-week study that we just completed on um, Be Anxious for Nothing with Max Lucado. So just some things to keep us connected. Appreciate your prayers. Um, phone call away. And please don't hesitate to call if something comes up. Also email or text. And we love you. And I look forward to going through the series with you. And so let's go ahead and go Lord in prayer, prayer together. Father God, I come to you. I come to you today and just thank you for your love and care. I thank you, Father, 
the amazing things that you have done, are doing, and are about to do. Lord, help us to focus on you. Help us to seek you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and just to focus, not on circumstances around us, but to focus on you. To focus on you, you have the power to change lives, to change our community, our world, and Father, I pray for that. And Lord Jesus, you have said that as your church family, that you called us the church, that we are the light of the world, that a city on a hill cannot be hidden. I pray that during these times, we are not hidden. There's people that are seeking you more than ever before. So help us, help us to learn and discover what you would have us to learn and to draw closer to you, just about how fantastic and how awesome your love is for us. We praise you, we love you, and thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray, amen. And so we begin this first weekend of October in what is called God, our Heavenly Father. And actually, in discovering, we hear that phrase, you may like, well, what kind of father is God? And that's what we we'll look at today. For all the negativity sometimes we give media, sometimes uh, they do some things surprisingly right on TV shows, not just mindless entertainment. But there was a show years ago, it was called Eight Simple Rules. And the actor who was in that, John Ritter, he passed away unexpectedly. And they had to figure out a way to make a scene or show that the character that John Ritter played was the father on the TV show, Eight Simple Rules. And James Garner played the grandfather in that. And if you don't know who these people are, you can look them up on Google uh, for those who are a lot younger than me. But they, he, James Garner is playing the grandfather and the actress who's playing his wife in a scene comes in and she says um, to James Garner's character, says, Dad, I don't understand. I don't understand why did this happen? We don't deserve this. Which James Garner's character responded, Honey, you're thinking that we deserve things in life. I don't deserve you or my beautiful grandchildren. So as we think about that and look at that, I want to share with you that often in pain, you and I cry out misconceptions about God. <clears throat> For the past <clears throat> years or different things in our lives, pain or things that have come up, uh, too often we go and we say, Lord, don't you love me? Don't you care about me? And what I want to share with you is that that's a misconception. Yes, he loves us. Yes, he cares about us. Suffering, I'm sorry to say, pain is a part of our life. We live in a broken world. And yet, God doesn't leave us broken. God gives us the ability to seek him, to see how much he loves and cares about us, and to move forward in that love that he has for us. One of the things Jesus Christ came to, <clears throat> to earth to do is to show us what God really likes. If you're saying, Russ, I want to discover what God, you know, what kind of father God is, who God is, look at the life of Jesus Christ. Look at the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus, I love this word, Jesus exploded. Sometimes it's negative, but here, he exploded all the stereotypes about God. In fact, Jesus described God in just two words. Two words are so powerful. In Matthew 6, 9, he said, this is how you should pray. In other words, this is how you should talk to God. This is how you should address the creator of the universe. Our Father in heaven. God wants you to think of him as a father. When I say God is a father, I can relate to a father. I can be intimate with a father. I can talk to a father. I can have a relationship with a father. That's the good news. The bad news is, and I heard this when I was in youth minister in different youth camps, there was a thought that, hey, you know, don't be proclaiming God as a father or dad, because some people had a very negative relationship or have a very negative relationship with their dad. And I would actually be cautious of that for a few years. And then through other teachings and spending time with my Heavenly Father, I realized, you know, there is a difference between my earthly father and my Heavenly Father. The difference is my dad, Pete Peters, was a great guy. And I love it. He wasn't perfect. 
There were things that he failed, just like all of us. And that's the thing. My dad, who loved me, and I praise God that he's a Christian, and also the promise of one day I'll see him again in heaven, spend eternity with him. My dad is not perfect. However, my heavenly father, praise him, he is. He is perfect. He is our perfect heavenly father. So Jesus wants to make sure we understood, and he qualified the term. And he said, this is how you should pray, our father in heaven. He said that we are to pray to our father in heaven. He's heavenly. He's a heavenly father as opposed to an earthly father. God is very, very different, as I already said, than human fathers. In the first place, as I've shared with you, God's perfect. Let's look at that. We're imperfect. We make mistakes. We blow it. God has never blown it. Amen? That's so wonderful. God has never blown it. He is unlike us. He is in a higher plane. We are to say our Father in heaven or our Heavenly Father. When I share with people my relationship with God, I discover there's four misconceptions. And so the first one is this, is that we think that God is unreasonable. You know, I, I can understand Russ, our Heavenly Father, there's, he's just unreasonable about some things. And the reason that we don't want to get to know God with this misconception is because he puts all those unreasonable demands on your life that you could never possibly live up to. It's like, why bother? Why even try? It's amazing that we put that 100% perfection on ourselves and we put things that are unreasonable to God, that, excuse me, that God said, that says his laws and commands are unreasonable to us. But let me share something with you and ask you this, something for us to think about. Jesus Christ, God incarnate, God who came down as a human and walked among us and loves us, and died on the cross for our sins, a cruel death. Was the cross reasonable? No. The cross wasn't reasonable because Jesus Christ needed to do something, a sacrifice to take care of all of our sins. He died on that cross for your sins and mine, the mistakes, the things, the imperfections. Those imperfections that, let's be honest, those sins that sometimes we know are wrong, but we do anyway. God says, I love you, and I care about you, and I want to have a relationship with you. And so to be reconciled, he died on the cross. Jesus Christ, God's only son, died for us. So we think some things might be unreasonable. Well, here's another one. We feel he's unreliable. Let's be honest. You hear the term, God's our heavenly father. He loves me. And you may be going, yeah, he may love other people, but I'm not sure about me because some things just never really transpired the way I wanted them to. Well, the reason for that is because we've been hurt. We've been hurt. People betrayed us. Things have happened. It's an interesting characteristic of human behavior. When somebody hurts us, we not only blame that person, but we also blame God. Have you ever focused on the fact that you and I have hurt a lot of people? Think about that. And God never stopped us. I've hurt, you've hurt many people for our own selfishness and self-centeredness. We blame God for our hurts as if, as if he caused it all. He didn't cause those hurts, people did. He allowed it because he allows freedom of choice in the world. He wants us to choose what's good. God desires for us to choose what, what's good. And we blame him for things. But the thing I want to share with you this morning is that God did not cause these hurts. These people did. But when these things happen, these betrayals, but we blame the people and God. The third thing I want to share with you is that we think God's unconcerned. I think God's just, he's too busy for me. If you think he's unconcerned, you're, going to tr you're not going to try to get to know him. You think, hey, he's just someone that I'm in a crowd and I'm there, but he's looking right through me. He's more concerned about everybody else. And that's a misconception. He's there for you. He's not aloof. The fourth misconception is this. is that some of us think God is unpleasable. There's no way to please God at all. 
just can't do it, so forget it. You think that no matter, how, no matter how hard you try, it's never good enough in his eyes. And you know something? Without Jesus Christ, there's no way to please him. And I'm sharing with you that here is the most remarkable thing. On our own, left to our own desires, left to our own, I'm going to do it my way. We're not pleasing in God's eyes. Yet he still loves us and he still cares for us. And he wants to draw us to him because he loves us. And we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to have everything together because he says, here am I. Here is my son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And it's not like you have to jump through all these hoops. Jesus says, here I am. I love you. So all four of these misconceptions get thrown out the window when we see how much God loves us, that he came to earth and he loves us and died on the cross and yet he rose again because he's God. He did it for you. Hear me this morning. Our heavenly father loves you. He loves me and gave everything for us so that we could be reconciled to him. So the best way I can share it is looking at Jesus Christ and we discover who Jesus is in the Bible and seeing the characteristics of God. And the first thing I want to share with you is the Bible says that God is a caring father. He's a caring father. He's compassionate, loving, gracious. He cares about us. In fact, he loves you more than you will ever know. Please hear that this morning. God loves you more than you'll ever know. Compassion is God's number one characteristic and attribute. Psalms 104 states this, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who honor him. Our perfect heavenly father, remember? Our perfect heavenly father who created the whole universe has compassion on us. When Jesus, in his earthly ministry, there's several times that he shared with the disciples, get in the boat. Get in the boat, and I'm going to go this way, and I'll meet you later on. And one of those times, the disciples was in the Sea of Galilee. And the Sea of Galilee, having been there and seen it twice, which I thank God for, it's a huge lake. And yet, I've also experienced storms. One night when I was visiting Israel, and we were by the Sea of Galilee, here this desert land, this beautiful lush valley in the Sea of Galilee, hail started coming down. The wind started whipping up. It was amazing. It just came all at once just because how big the lake is. And in the Gospels describing the storm that the disciples were in, what's interesting to note is that some of these guys were fishermen and they started crying out and they were screaming. Well, this time Jesus was in the boat with him and he was sleeping. And the storm's raging and things are happening. The disciples go and they wake up and says, Lord, wake up. Don't you care? Have you been there? Not just physical storms, but how about just storms of life that are coming down? Like, like the last seven, eight months we've been involved with this pandemic. And the things that are going around in our country. Thinking, Lord, do you care? He cares. He loves us and desires us. This is one of the most profound questions. The disciples asked it in that storm and we did. And... It comes down, you know, emotionally, does God care about our hurts? Until you settle that issue, does God care? You're not going to get to know God. If you think he doesn't care, why get to know him? Does God care about the details of your life? You bet. You bet. Jesus stood up and he calmed the storm physically. And he wants to do that in our lives. One of those disciples, the apostle Peter, He was a guy that was kind of boisterous and out there. And he he was one of those first guys. And he was a professional fisherman saying, Lord, don't you care? Later on, after Jesus' resurrection returned to heaven, he would be helping new believers under persecution, writing letters to them. In the Bible, in 1 Peter, one of the first letters he wrote, 5-7, he states this. Cast a little bit or partially some of your cares upon him. No. Cast all of our anxiety on him. Cast all the spiritual, and this is paraphrase, cast all the spiritual sounding problems on him. No, it, it, it's not just small. It says everything. It says cast all. Look at that scripture, 1 Peter 5, 7, and look at that word all. 
Cast all your cares on him. That means every kind of worry, anxiety, fear, financial, physical, social, spiritual, mental, relational, everything because he cares for you. Because of that, because of that, the Bible says this. So don't worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what will we wear? Your heavenly father knows you need these things. God says, what are you worrying about? God knows the details of our lives. He's going to take care of our needs. He loves us. Whenever we start worrying about anything, it's a warning sign that we have a double standard to love of God. That's what worry is. I'm sorry, we have a doubt. <laughs> Misread that. We have a doubt about what God's love is. That's what worry is, doubting that God is, in control, that, that God is not in control and doesn't care. Doubting that God is in control and that God cares is basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the place of God. When I start worrying, when I start going off on like, I've got to take care of this. I've got to figure this out. I've got to you know, go on and on. You know, how's that work for you? How does that work for you? Why worry? Why worry? Our problem is not that we don't love God enough. The problem is that we don't realize how much God loves us. That's the whole thing. Some of us say, well, I believe in Jesus, and I believe he said, who he said he was, and I want to show you congratulations, but do you believe how much he loves and cares for us? See, we looked at these four misconceptions. We looked at these, and what I want to share with you is I want you to place a picture, a picture in your mind, a picture in your mind about how much God cares about us, how much he loves us how much he desires us. And what I want you to place in your mind is a scene of the disciples at night. They're overlooking Jerusalem and Jesus is sitting there with them. The fire is going and there's some calm and there's peace and there's assurance because God is right there with them, among them. His presence is there. And as I shared before, as Jesus proclaimed, this is how you pray, how you talk to God, I want to set this setting. For many years, I thought it was on a hillside, uh, in the daylight, and different things. But as I toured Israel, the actual site of where Jesus taught the disciples about their Heavenly Father, how to pray, is actually in the cave that I described to you, on a hill overlooking the Garden of Gethsemane and overlooking all of Jerusalem. It's beautiful. And there's a church built around it. And in this church, it's all different languages around the world um, that the Lord's Prayer is written in. There's plaques all over, different languages. And as you look in that cave, you just realize that it's at nighttime. And what our teacher during that time shared with us is that here, at night is when mostly the families of Jewish families pray to God before they go to sleep. Now, as a child, I memorized this prayer. It goes, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. That was kind of in the early stages of my parents. Uh, they would go to church in the relationship with God and not discover... Um, they hadn't trusted Jesus Christ with the heart and life, but they saw the importance, the need. Um, they got married in a church, and this church reached out to them. And, and another godly Christian church, when they moved to another military base, reached out to them. And they discovered Christians loving them, and, and they wanted more of that. And finally, my parents trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And I'm so thankful for that. And it's that when the relationship started happening. And so I'm not knocking that prayers little child. I'm just saying that it's kind of like a chance. And if I die before what, you know, Lord, hey, if you have some time, can you take me? <laughs> Praise God he's not like that. Praise God that he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And so here is Jesus. 
with his disciples on that beautiful hill. The sun is setting, fire is going. And the disciples say, Lord, teach us to pray. How, Lord, how do we talk to God? And he says, our father who is in heaven. And he shares that prayer with them and talks to them. And what he's sharing, what to understand is this, is that he loves and he cares for us. And he's there in anticipation of us to spend time with him. Those four misconceptions that I shared with you, those four things that as we look at and understand, those four things, they often have, when we are just having difficulties or worries or fears, and let's be honest, some of us have been Christians for life, we give in to these misconceptions. Well, God must not be caring about me today, but it doesn't stack up when we stop and we say, Father. And that's the thing is to stop just in the stillness, even with the storms of life, like the disciples, they're yelling and screaming, Jesus, do you care? God says, yeah, I care. I love you. And here's the thing. I am your caring father. And I'll calm those storms of life. I want to share with you that I'm very familiar with suffering. And many of you have been with Grace and I, um, the church family, and, and seen things in our lives. And I want to share with you that through it all, through pain, through heartache, betrayal, illness, sudden deaths of loved ones, that our Redeemer is faithful and true. And that's my prayer for you today, is that for us to stop, it's the pandemic, it's the civil unrest, it, what's going to happen? I've heard many people talk about the end times. And you know, amen. I want Jesus to come. And I look forward to that day of being in eternity with him. And if it's his plan to come, amen. Jesus shared this. Only the Father knows that time and date. So there's a lot of thought about, are we in the end times? And I will say yes. Because the Apostle Paul thought that. Thousands of years ago, he thought that. And yet, here we are, and I want to share with you, just as he thought, so I think, and instead of like, well, I think it might be here, or think about this, or worrying, or, or, or focusing on like, well, is this going to happen or that? It's like, stop and focus on the love of God. Because here's the thing, right now, in this present time, until Jesus comes, he's saying, I love you, and I want you to share that love with others. And yet, I'm not going to do that if I don't think God is a caring Heavenly Father. I'm not going to do that if I have an attitude that God doesn't care about me, that God is unreasonable, that God can't be pleased, and all these other misconceptions and lies. But when I look at and I see the God who stands up in physical storms, the God who went to the cross of Calvary for me and died in that cross, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I share with you that yes, and confident that he is our loving heavenly father. And praise God, it just didn't end at the cross. He rose again, amen? And that's the thing for us to realize is that he is our loving, caring heavenly father. You see, it's more than just believing. It's more than just wishing. It's having that relationship. And so this morning, this may be the first time you've ever heard about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And you've got to stop thinking, well, I'm not good enough. You know, okay, I want to share with you. We are not. I'm not good enough. But Jesus Christ is. God is. And he loves us. And to trust him and say, Lord, here am I. And the great thing is you think, man, there's no way I can do this. No way. You're right. That's why we seek him as a father. Help me. Help my father in heaven. Help me. Give me the power. Give me the strength. Help me to seek you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Because that is fulfillment in life. That is purpose. That is hope. And that right there is going to change my life, my family's life, and the people around me. 
Believing isn't just thinking he's a good teacher. Relationship. Choosing to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Becoming his child. Becoming God's child and seeking him. That's it right there. And that's the key. That's the key for you and I to, in the midst of everything going on, to understand and know that God is a caring, loving, heavenly father. I say, do you believe that God calmed those storms? Do you believe Jesus actually calmed those storms? The auditorium was filled today. <laughs> Many people say, amen, yes. Well then, beloved, why don't we believe that he can take care of anything in our lives. And he loves us. And he knows us by name. And he cares for us. You see, in relationship with God, we say, Lord, you call the shots now. You are my savior. You be the manager of my life. I'm putting on a sign that says, under new management. God, you're in charge from here on out. And when you and I put our faith in Christ, when you and I believe and receive him, then we belong. And we begin a journey of becoming everything that he desires for us. I look forward to going on this journey with us because what I'm excited about is we just talked about one. <laughs> we had four misconceptions. And we just talked about one promise, one great character of God. Next weekend, I'm going to be talking and sharing with you about three more characters of God and how much he loves and cares for us. If you are seeking a relationship with Jesus Christ, God has touched your heart somehow, please give us a call. My phone number is 253-576-7157. And I would love to be able to hear from you, to, if you want to text also, to set up a time to meet with you and to start that journey, to help you on that journey of seeking Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If there's frustrations, if storms of life are really hitting, your, your church family's here and call me, text me. There's other leaders too in life for our church that would love to help you. Other church members love to meet with you. A great way of staying connected and Tuesday nights you can stay connected we'll send you a zoom <clears throat> zoom link to meet with us and spend that time in God's Word it's been a wonderful time a lot of people have been blessed by it and I look forward to sharing that also Karen Johnston you can send a zoom link for that um, Bible study for Wednesdays but don't be isolated and don't give in to the lies and misconception that God doesn't that doesn't care for you. He does. He loves you. And he cares for you and desires the very best for you. My prayer is that you and I can live in the peace and the purpose of our loving Heavenly Father. And as we close, we join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who've sinned against us. Lead us not to temptation, deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for being here with me this weekend. Have a great rest of the weekend. God bless you. And realize you have a heavenly father who loves you.